Twin Turbo Tuesday then. What's that? Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> and then some. Um, so we thought we'd do a bit of a recap video. Um, obviously we've got them fitted up on this turnkey engine that we're building. Um, those that follow our workshop updates will have seen uh, the last workshop update. Um, building this engine up for a guy called Kevin who's doing an off-roader and I've borrowed it temporarily to hang the turbos off of for some photos and the purpose of this video. Um, so, a bit of a recap, where did it all come about? I've got a P38 Range Rover that I off-road and use for towing, uh, the, towing the Ford KA monster truck or mini monster truck around and um, I wanted a bit more oomph. Lots of people have been out and done supercharger conversions on P38, so I want to be a bit different. Uh, and also, I like tow balls. I've had a few Jap cars in my life. Um, so, uh, the Twin Turbo Tuesday project was born. Um, I actually had a... <laughs> what's the date today? It's the 30th of September. Um, I had a reminder on Facebook today. One year ago today, I placed the order for these turbos. Oh. So, <laughs> that was a, a bit relevant that we're doing the video today. Um, I've been asked a lot recently, what's happening to Twin Turbo Tuesday? So, I got everything ready to bolt on, all mocked up in the dummy vehicle we, that I built it on in the workshop, and then COVID hit. So yes, excuse one is COVID. And I'll yes, start a tally. Uh, we, we will be starting a tally. So excuse one is COVID. Um, after these are bolted on the, onto my P38, I need to um, have the ECU mapped. So that involves travelling across the UK to our tuner, who does all our Rover V8 ECU programming, uh, Mark. And obviously with Covid, uh, that's pretty much an unnecessary reason to travel across the UK. So I decided it would be better to not fit them. Uh, once they're fitted, I'll be doing a few hundred miles, just shake down, make sure I've got no issues before I then go to the rollers. Um, so I then thought I'd better get on with another project because I like to do something. I don't like to sit about doing nothing. So I started on my series to 88 inch chassis repairs and bits and bobs and the V8 Hilux. And of course I had to get those projects then done to a level where they're not open engines and, and you know, they're sort of a next stage um, ready for the next bit before I then jump back onto this. However, um, I then thought of some other things I should do on my Range Rover before installing the turbos because my mind had had time to think about stuff. Dangerous really. Yeah, so we'll disappear from this bit uh, and go over there and then come back. Over there? I wasn't, hang on. Yeah, you don't know about this. but I don't know about this, what's going on? The excuses list isn't all here. Some of it's over there. This is excuse time then. It is. How does a gearbox that's not from your car and a lump of metal slow you down? And a flex plate. Um, okay, so two lumps of metal. It was one, then I cut it in two. Um, first of all, this isn't a lump of metal, it's a thermostat housing. Those that follow us on Facebook or follow me on Instagram and things, um, the running temperature of a P38 Range Rover with the standard construction thermostat installed is uh, about 95 degrees, mid 90s. Um, I would like to reduce my uh, datum, effectively, my thermostat temperature. There's lots of people out there that convert to uh, Discovery 2 style thermostat housing, um, but it requires modifying the pipework because uh, there's one less spout on the thermostat housing and I decided I didn't want to do that uh, you can then run a cold climate Discovery 2 thermostat uh, I decided I didn't want to do that well you would wouldn't you so is it cold climate or hot climate stat I forget anyway it reduces the temperature um, <clears throat> part of the whole turbo conversion for me has been retaining lots of functionality of the original car so I want to retain the cruise control this question marks still over that but it should be achievable I want to retain air conditioning um, I didn't want to have to hack parts of the car to pieces to achieve this I wanted to do it something that could be installed onto a car without having to modify the car heavily uh, and for me I decided that doing a Discovery 2 thermostat housing I think Freeland has been used as well hasn't it? Possibly, they yeah. look similar um, I, I didn't want to go down that route, so my idea was um, 
find a thermostat that has the secondary plate for the bypass shutoff, which is what this plate here is, that is available in different temperature ranges, which this one is. Um, and uh, this is a 76.5 degree stat. Uh, so the lowest temperature that's available. Uh, there's two other steps up above, above this. And then design a thermostat housing that would fit around this that has the original port configuration. Uh, I've done a CAD model of this now because uh, I want to teach yourself a bit of CAD as well. So it's a nice little project there. Um, so hopefully there's now an animated spinning thing on the screen of that. And these are the two uh, slugs of metal that I'll be using to machine that from. So this will be the base, um, which is this section here. That'll be nice and simple with a lip around it with a bolt pattern. And then the upper section which will house the uh, thermostat will be made from this slug here and uh, yeah but to achieve that and kind of uh, figure it all out I had to cut to pieces uh, original thermostat so you can see it's a secondary plate there which when the thermostat opens it shuts off the bypass here uh, and ensure that all the water goes through the radiator from the top hose whereas originally when the thermostat's closed down here no water goes through the radiator and everything goes through the bypass tube there. So that's excuse. Are we on there too? Yeah. Yes. Gearbox. So I don't have any issues with my gearbox, but my car has done 150 odd thousand miles, and um, I won't be installing this prior to turbos. But knowing that it will be tuned on a dyno, and one of the dyno runs is one of the harshest conditions because you're under extreme load and uh, uh, all RPMs really, all that you can achieve with an auto that has kicked down. Um, I really want to put a rebuilt gearbox into the vehicle before there's a dyno run, so my plan is to rebuild this gearbox that I've uh, got um, and then install it into the car prior to dyno running it. Uh, however, I will be fitting the turbos and at least doing those few hundred miles of shakedown testing with the turbos with my box in there uh, at present. Um, but prior, prior to going on the dyno, I want a fully reconditioned gearbox because the worst thing would be to drive the hundreds of miles to get it tuned and then find out that I've got slip on you know, third gear on the clutch packs in the gearbox and I then can't be tuned and I've got to come all the way back. And obviously if I'm installing a new gearbox, we always install new flex plates, but I've also sourced a heavy duty flex plate because I'm going to be putting additional torque and power through there, you know, maybe over the 300 horsepower mark, which is beyond where we've gone before. Um, why not? Belt and braces. Why not? Why not? So I think that finishes the excuses. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Um, let's go through and just recap on the engine. That's the excuses list then? Pretty much, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, not many, but some. Um, but, I'm pretty much, other than finishing that thermostat housing off, uh, in a position where these can be refitted now. Uh, really, really pleased with how this has turned out. It looks a lot wider than when it's hung off the side of an engine than it did when it was in an engine bay. Um, bit of a recap again, so there's a charge cooler to go on here, which then loops around to the intake uh, plenum. Uh, and then we've got the MAF on here with uh, air cleaner, obviously, and this is the pipe work for the recirc valve, uh, which pipes up to, obviously, the, the charge side. Um, so uh, yeah, the uh, ceramic coating to the exhaust manifolds has come out really, really nicely. Really pleased with that. Uh, we've obviously got all the lambda ports in here for um, what's this? So this is the uh, offside lambda, near side lambda, and then the uh, I've got a lambda port down here for tuning for the wide band. Um, everything's bracketed off. So this turbo here, which is coming fed from the uh, driver side um, manifold, uh, is actually on a support bracket down here off of the engine mount. <coughs> um, I actually clocked this turbo as well so it's rotated round and made up a new bracket which actually I've still got to paint for the uh, actuator. Um, getting the preload on that exactly the same as the original one was, was quite interesting and fun. I quite enjoyed doing that little bracket there. I like brackets. We know someone else that likes brackets as well. <laughs> yeah, Project Binky likes brackets. Um, we do an update on that aren't we? don't think Probably. That, I reckon, They're on the same time scale as you are. I can say, yeah, more so. Um, so, turbos here are Garrett uh, GT 2560Rs, if I remember correctly. Um, so, uh, common questions I'm getting asked at the moment. One is when. Uh, I've just explained why it's taken a while. And all good projects do take time because it's important to do them right rather than rush into them. 
Um, many projects, you know, you can end up with a car that you then can't drive because you, you're halfway through it, you can't get parts you need all of a sudden, uh, or, um, you know, it's not running right and you don't have the, the finances or, or you can't get it booked in for tuning, etc. So it, it's just a, a case of planning it carefully as well. Um, still keep getting asked um, how much power. Um, which as I've covered in previous videos, um, we've obviously now done the pre-dyno uh, run. So the car made 240, 242 horsepower, I think, uh, on both petrol and LPG. Uh, that's a, a standard 4.6 engine build. For, for us here, we have a Piper 270 camshaft. Um, no, you know, nothing done on cylinder heads. Um, no change to compression ratio. It's still 935 to one compression ratio. Um, so I was happy with that result. Uh, the ECU is obviously been remapped to naturally aspirated um, <coughs> spec. So um, I think initially I kind of said, well, 300 would be nice. Um, I guess sort of secretly I'm obviously hoping for uh, a bit more than that, but it makes what it makes. Uh, we're only going to be running very low boost because it's standard internals on the engine. Um, and uh, yeah, so we have to wait and see how the engine responds to boost as well um, when tuning to, to really kind of see where the power figures end up. Um, so yeah, uh, really looking forward to that bit. Um, how much does it cost? Uh, well... Lots. Cool, yeah. I'd have quite a lot if I was getting paid for my hours in this. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I think, you know, if, if we were building up a turnkey engine like this with the twin turbocharger set up, forgetting the intake pipe work, because that's more vehicle specific, um, you know, this would probably fit a lot of engine bays, uh, assuming it's right-hand drive. Um, I, I would imagine this would fit most a lot of engine bays, but obviously specifically it's been built up for a P38 Range Rover right-hand drive. Uh, this would, The turbos and everything here would fit a GEMS or a Thor model. Um, Probably, I think we're going to advertise an engine and a turbo setup at around the twenty-five to thirty thousand pound mark, um, which for a freshly built full turnkey engine with engine management system, the lot, the turbo setup with the exhaust manifolds, everything built there, um, I think it's probably where where it will be sitting. But we'll obviously have a fig, uh, look at the figures there, and uh, we we will put that up on our website when we when we do that. Um, but initially, for me, I'm not. So fussed about that because this isn't a product that we're quite ready to sell yet. We want to get them on my engine running um, and, uh, you know, making sure everything's good because we don't sell things here unless they're tested. Um, so that's that's where we need to go first before we, we even look at uh, the option of selling. Although a few people have had email wanting this already, so uh, I kind of do need to pull the finger out and get it installed. Um, just... You know the final excuse, don't you? No, I don't. I'm waiting for a date from a solicitor to move house. And I even need to get all of this fitted and done prior to moving house or post moving house because I can't really be midway when well, moving. You practically live here anyway. That is true. So I reckon a sleeping bag in your car, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, sleep in the workshop. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's Twin Turbo Project update. Fitting is imminent, uh, once I've just got that thermostat housing done and on the car and tested, um, and uh, pending a house move. Yeah, we'll see you next year then.